1761. Two African girls are stolen from their homes and families. They miraculously survive a forced march from the interior of West Africa to the dungeons on the coast, where they are kept locked underground in the dark for weeks, waiting for a slave ship to come and buy them in exchange for rum and guns. They are moved from the dungeons to a watery prison in the hold of a ship called Phyllis. Having never sailed before, they get sick from the sway of the boat and the filth on the Phyllis. They vomit on each other. They defecate on each other. They hear women and children wailing and screaming, some praying for death. Sometimes they are led on deck, where they must move, dance, or be whipped. One little girl, the one with no front teeth, begins to fade. But the other little girl holds her hand tightly and hardens her will. She will not die. The little girl with no front teeth survives. She is renamed Phyllis after the ship which took her away from everything that made her human. Phyllis, a Greek goddess associated with spring, tender greens, and women's secrets. Phyllis, an English diminutive reserved for enslaved girls in the 1760s. By the time she turns 20, the little girl now called Phyllis Wheatley will have become an international celebrity, a published poet who visited the founding fathers Benjamin Franklin and George Washington, a darling of the English aristocracy, and one of the few who was given an audience to appear before His Royal Highness, King George III, ruler of Great Britain and King of Ireland. But her, sharp, her star shone brightly only a short time. The first African American to publish a book an abolitionist and lifelong writer, Phyllis Wheatley died at the age of 31. Come meet her. Let us walk the way shown by the sorrow songs for clues to her life.